Hey tech fans, today I'm Mackie Tech. We're checking out DTV Electronics CM Rat, a versatile carrier or baseboard designed for usage with compute modules or CMs like the Raspberry Pi CM5. The CM Rat goes for $39 and is marketed towards hardware integrators or system developers. And because of this, it's extremely versatile. It has onboard PoE and PCIe without the need of multiple hats. And you can use it to build a NAS, a self-hosted home server, or even a retro gaming console. It's open source, flexible, and honestly one of the best tinker boards out there for experimenting with various custom setups. You can also swap between different compute modules like the Raspberry Pi 5, 4, or even the Radka variants. The CMs, which are all sold separately, handle all the processing power, provide the RAM and optional storage, while the CM RAT provides all of the power and ports, just like a regular CPU and motherboard combination. The CM reason today is the Raspberry Pi 5 compute module, or CM5 for short. This particular one comes with 32 gigabytes of eMMC storage, 16 gigabytes of RAM, as well as Wi-Fi and Bluetooth 5.0. And in full disclosure, both the CM Rat and the Raspberry Pi 5 compute module were sent to me by DTV Electronics at no charge. However, no money has changed hands. DTV Electronics has not reviewed this video before it was uploaded. And as always, everything you're going to hear here today is my honest take. And also to be upfront, I'm not a developer. I'm more of a tinkerer who loves working with SBCs, but this is my first real dive into compute modules and carrier boards. So please take some of my impressions about setup and documentation with a grain of salt. So the CM rat I'm testing here is version 2.8, the latest revision, which actually evolved from the original BitPi rat design that had its M2 slot on the top of the board versus the bottom. And to put the CM Rat and CM5 combo through their paces, we'll install Raspberry Pi OS Lite and then set up Casa OS, a clean, simple to use Docker-based home lab dashboard for hosting your favorite services. We'll then install some apps to visualize real-time performance and run some tests to see how it does. So first, let's get the CM Rat unboxed and go over the carrier board specs. Starting with the back of the box, there is a clean diagram showing the board layout, a nice touch if you just want a quick reference before diving in. Once inside, we have a pamphlet with DTV Electronics website, and inside there's a QR code that links directly to the online reference manual. Next up, a 12 volt cooling fan that will secure to our CM5, a small Phillips screwdriver, a 12 volt power supply with plug adapters for multiple regions. And here's the black aluminum enclosure with the CM wrap board inside. It actually came fully assembled out of the box. I just forgot to put it back together before filming. Moving on, there's a bag with rubber feet for the case, heat sinks for the compute module optionally, mounting screws, and a USB-C to USB-A adapter. Now let's take a closer look at the board itself. Starting from the top, we have a mini HDMI port, which we'll discuss a little later, next to a USB-C port, which can be used for power through onboard jumpers that are enabled by default. There's a 12 volt fan header and two 100 pin mezzanine connectors for your compute module. Next to that is a toggle switch that lets you choose between USB boot and OS boot modes. You also get a 20 pin GPIO header for adding a breadboard, sensors, or other automation projects. A one gigabit ethernet port that supports power over ethernet along the 12 volt barrel jack connector, and of course the PoE module itself. Flipping the board over, there's a 2280 M.2 NVMe slot and a micro SD card slot, which honestly seems like a, an odd placement underneath the board and underneath where the NVMe is gonna go. And then we have the Compute Module 5, which plugs neatly into these two mezzanine slots on top of the board. And finally, the aluminum case. It's got cutouts for the mini HDMI, USB-C, Ethernet, and of course the power jack. According to their website, DTV randomly chooses the color of your case when you purchase the kit. 
uh, which is a little odd, but we'll come back to the case once everything's connected. So first impressions, the online reference guide is actually pretty solid. It's detailed and all of the labels are clearly explained. That said, I really wish they'd included a basic assembly guide or at least a contents list. Another interesting detail I noticed is the online reference manual correctly identifies the mini HDMI port, but on the back of the CMRAT box, as well as on DTV's website, the port is labeled as simply HDMI port. Uh, maybe I'm being a little overly picky or critical, or perhaps it's because I'm not really a developer, but having consistent port labeling is kind of important, especially if you're setting this up for the first time. I happen to have a mini HDMI to HDMI cable on hand, but not everybody will. And stuff like that is going to be frustrating when you first try to set the board up and you realize you have to have an additional cable to fully get the system working. So with that out of the way, I'll mount the CM5 on the CM rat and flash the OS to the EMMC storage. But a word of caution, the pins on the CM5 are pretty delicate, so be careful or you might need to surgically bend back the pins as I did. To perform the flash, we'll connect the CMRAT's USB-C cable to my Mac and switch the CMRAT to USB boot mode. Next, we need to install RPI boot, which lets the Mac communicate with the CM5. And this is where things get a little confusing as there's no mention of the RPI boot tool or how to flash the eMMC anywhere in the reference guide or DTV's website or GitHub page. Now, to be fair, DTV does have a blog post on their website with some instructions for installing RPI boot on Mac OS, but it's kind of tucked away. You'd really expect at least a short section on flashing the module in the official documentation, especially since the CM rat won't even function without a compute module installed. Once I had RPI boot set up, I flashed Raspberry Pi OS Lite version 13, which is Trixie, to the eMMC using the Pi Imager with no issue. After that, I connected to the CM5 over SSH and installed CasOS with a single command, which I'll leave in the video description along with all the links for the RPI boot tool. Once Casa OS is installed, it helpfully shows the IP address you'll use to connect to its web dashboard. So we'll navigate to the web dashboard and set up our account. And here we are in Casa OS, which is basically poor Tanner on steroids. It's built on Docker, but it wraps everything in a clean web interface with one clip app installs. It has built in file management, basic system monitoring widgets on the left, a search bar and a very robust app store with everything from cloud storage solutions, web browsers, system monitoring, and even recipe management. For our testing, we're going to be using apps Bezel and Btop, two awesome system monitoring tools that track CPU load, temperature, and RAM usage in real time. Btop is very similar to HTOP, but has a cleaner layout and more customization options to show your RAM and storage usage. And to keep tabs on uptime, we're going to be using Uptime Kuma, running from a separate machine, of course, just to see how stable this setup really is. To test how the CM5 handles sustained workloads, I ran a custom five minute Sysbench CPU test that logs CPU frequency and timestamps to a file, both with and without active cooling and without the aluminum cover. With only passive heat sinks, the system had an idle temp of 64 degrees C and rose roughly to 72 degrees C before the system shut down mid-test. I performed the test twice more letting things cool down, but it still died after about 80-90 seconds. After adding an active fan, the results were really night and day. Uh, idle temp started at 52 degrees C and never climbed above 57 degrees C for the entire five minute run. So yeah, the takeaway here is simple. The CM5 runs a little hot under heavy workloads, but even a small active fan completely stabilized it for sustained performance. For my power draw test, the CM rat and CM5 combo drew around 5.8 watts under load using the 12 volt barrel jack and about seven watts when powered over PoE. So both power inputs have plenty of headroom. The 12 volt jack can supply up to 12 watts 
and the PoE under the 802.3 AF standard can deliver around 15.4 watts. In testing, everything stayed completely stable, so the PoE isn't just a convenience, it's definitely good for performance work. To test storage performance, I use a tool called Flexible I.O. Tester, or FIO, which is designed to measure read and write speeds under real workloads. I ran two quick tests, one for sequential writes and one for sequential reads, each moving a 512 megabyte file using one megabyte sizes. For the CM5's onboard eMMC, we hit about 333 megabytes per second read and 114 megabytes a second write, which is pretty typical for a higher end eMMC. After attaching my 256 gigabyte NVMe drive, we ran the same tests and saw a huge difference. The CM5 reached around 870 megabytes per second reads and over four gigabytes writes. That's nearly three times faster to read and roughly 10 times faster to write than the built-in eMMC. So with the test done, I assembled the rest of the case and ran into a couple of hiccups. The bottom section isn't labeled, so you kind of have to guess how the CM board should sit for the top cover to line up correctly. I actually ended up making my own label just to make it a little more idiot proof for myself. Also, once the top is on, you can't access the boot USB switch without unscrewing the cover. And the GPIO pins are also inaccessible. The enclosure itself is solid, compact, looks great, and for my purposes, I really have no complaints, but for a board marketed towards developers and systems integrators, it feels like a case, no pun intended, where style won over function. Overall, the CM RAT paired with the CM5 delivers excellent performance once everything's up and running. PoE power is stable, NVMe storage is lightning fast, and with active cooling, the CM5 stays cool and consistent even under heavy workloads. That said, getting there takes a lot of work. The documentation skips over some really important setup details like flashing the eMMC and installing the RPI boot tool, which could easily trip up some first time users. And while the aluminum enclosure looks great once assembled, it blocks the board's versatility by closing off access to the boot OS switch and GPIO pins. So it might not be the most beginner friendly setup, but for only $39 for the CM RAT and $100 to $150 for the compute module, I think it's a solid combo if you want a home lab server or even a daily driver that's pretty rock solid and performs well. Anyway, that's going to wrap up another review, and I wanted to thank DTV Electronics again for sending me the kit. All purchase links will be in the video description. And if you like this video, please give us a like or drop me a comment and make sure to click on that subscribe button if you haven't done so already. Also, I started YouTube memberships for the channel, so if you want to support me and get cool badges and custom emojis, be sure to check it out. Again, thank you all for your support and for watching, and we'll be talking to you again very soon.